All right, everybody. Hail and welcome to this special episode of Midgard Musings. As you notice, my uh, setup is a little bit different. Um, and I wanted to do this to uh, for the visual folks, for the folks on the YouTube channel, uh, just to know that. But for everybody that may, um, you know, experience this particular uh, Midgard Musings thing on any other platform, this is a little bit of a different sort of experience. You know, you may be listening and you're not going to see some of the visuals, but hopefully the, um, you know, the audio um, is going to translate across successfully. So um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do was share with everybody a recent video that I came across from a pretty prominent figure. Um, in the public sector, all right? Uh, so before I share what I'm about to share, uh, which I'm sure you already know from the thumbnail if you're watching this on YouTube, um, it is a Ben Shapiro video. Uh, I want to preface what I'm about to share with a disclaimer in, in, in sorts. Um, so, so what I want to say is that um, I, I do not hold any sort of political affiliations. I don't, I don't, you know, um, uh, carry any allegiance, I guess you could say, to political affiliations. I'm, I, I don't dabble in that. The reason why I'm sharing this particular thing um, on this platform is because of the, um, the message that is being carried or, or the subject matter and how I feel it fits into heathenry specifically. So pol politics, you know, just, just erase that out of your mind. Uh, Midgard Musings doesn't hold any sort of specific myself, I, I, me as, as the, you know, Midgard Musings uh, face and image or whatever. Um, I, don't, I don't lean one specific way or the other when it comes to the political spectrum of things. I don't, I don't put my videos out here to, 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 to lean in any sort of political direction, left, right, whatever. Um, the reason why I wanted to share this is because of some specific things. So I wanted to share the um, specific video that we are about to see, um, which is a Ben Shapiro video that I came across on Facebook. Um, and what you're about to see is a dialogue between this young man and Ben Shapiro in a sort of conference sort of setting. Um, but I thought that there was a lot of um, important things to, to, to talk about or think about. So I'm going to share the dialogue that Ben Shapiro and this individual has and offer my insight in between. So um, this is the video. Um, and I'm going to pause it in between and kind of just share my thoughts a little bit as we go along. All right, so here's the start of the video. Hey, Ben. So I'm definitely a left-leaning student, um, but I listen to your podcast every day. Well, thank you for coming uh, and thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Thank Take you. Thank guys. you. Uh, so my question uh, is about race and culture. Uh, so while I agree with you that when you look at white America, it's silly to say that the majority of white Americans are actively trying to prevent you from getting to where you want to be. Uh, I'm East Indian, and I have definitely experienced some racism, but I never felt as though it keeps Indians from succeeding. So I do think there's a cultural component that supersedes the color of your skin. But I also think that it's naive to say that it just so happens that the same minority groups that have been historically oppressed happen to have cultures that are less conducive to success. Uh, I believe that environment can create culture. Uh, can you acknowledge the historical reasonings that led that these so-called unsuccessful cultures uh, and not put blame on these minority groups. Uh, I know that in your heart, I don't think you're a racist person, uh, but in my, in my opinion, uh, to blame people for their, failure, for their cultural failures without taking into consider in historical, uh, the history in general conceals a lack of empathy and sort of hints at racism. Okay, so uh, I'll fight back on the last point that, that you know, there's anything to do with empathy or racism here, um, but I fully agree with you. Like one hundred, not not like ninety percent, like a hundred percent. I think the bad cultures are generally the result of bad things that have happened in the past or bad modes of thought that have. All right. So 
bad cultures are the result of bad things that have happened in the past. I wanted to touch on that. And the reason why I'm bringing this whole thing up, right, is because a lot of people, um, and some of what you're about to hear in this video, in this dialogue, focuses on America, North America specifically, the, 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 uh, the struggles, the, the, the things that certain cultural demographics have, have felt in, in America specifically over time. I wanted to touch on this specifically because I think that there's some validity to what's being called out here in a heathen context. All right, so this individual who's bringing up, what he's bringing up is East Indian, um, and Ben is responding. So let's continue with the dialogue. Prevailed over time. So for example, uh, there's a, a great book by Thomas Sowell uh, called uh, Black Rednecks and White Liberals. Uh, and that book essentially suggests that a lot of the, path, uh, the pathologies that exist about single motherhood, for example, in the black community or high rates of violence are actually outgrowths of a slave and post-slave culture that was imposed by a white society that didn't bother with policing, that didn't in, that didn't care about inculcating morals or virtues in in slaves. Obviously, they actually actively fought against it because they didn't want that to happen. Um, and so there was an active fight from assimil uh, against assimilation by white people, and that created a, an underground culture that's really bad, and that exists in parts of white America too. It exists in Appalachia. So. Yes, I, I think bad cultures have nothing to do with race. Uh, I don't think that just because, the, this is why I'm saying I don't know why it borders on racism to say the cultures are bad. Like some cultures are bad, some cultures are good, and that has nothing to do with race. Charles Murray wrote an entire book called Coming Apart about pathologies in white communities uh, that, that are really destructive. So bad cultures do arise very often from historical circumstances, including historical discrimination. What I say is that today there's nothing preventing an individual from superseding the culture in which you grew up and making good decisions. So here's where I kind of wanted to call this whole thing out. There, there is nothing preventing you from succeeding now and today based on the fact that your ancestors, uh, things that happened in the past, sort of laid a foundation or laid a layer to your own luck or to the luck of the people that, that you are tied to in your success. We're getting into some discussion now, or we're going to get into some discussion now about Orlog that primal layer of luck that we as descendants, that we living now in the here and now, sort of inherit, sort of absorb from the people who came before us, you know? <clears throat> and I think what Ben is trying to say is that, um, and, and I think you're gonna see uh, as we proceed through this video, is that, you know, just because you got dealt a, 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 a hand of cards, just because you got dealt a hand of cards that were not so, um, so, so, so good, you know what I mean? Just because you got dealt a crappy hand doesn't mean that you have to play that crappy hand. Um, so let's listen to what Ben has to say. In a free country, somebody's going to have to break this chain. Somebody's going to have to break this cycle. And so, am I going to? I don't care if you want to. If you want to say that, that the pathology that exists in the black community, uh, black inner city community of high rates of single motherhood and violence, for example, um, or lack of institutional wealth, uh, that that is a result of, of historic racism, I'm fine with you saying that. I don't have any problem with that. I'm not talking about historical racism when I talk about white privilege. I'm talking about right now the idea that there's a superstructure of rules and laws that are preventing you from succeeding or a culture that is trying to keep you down. I don't think that's the case. So the question becomes, if you are here, let's say, let's say that on average, the culture in white America, uh, or with regard to single motherhood, to take an example, uh, is is here, right? Because there's less single motherhood in the white community than the black community. And in the black community, it's it's here because it's 70% single motherhood rate and the white community is 40%. Okay, so the question is, before, thanks to racism and thanks to discrimination, there was a cap on the black community that was here and they couldn't get past it. Okay, now the, the ceiling's been removed. So what do you as an individual black person do to change your life? And I don't think it's helpful and in fact, I think it's actually quite hurtful to spend an enormous amount of time talking about the legacy of discrimination and racism instead of talking about what can you do right now to fix your problem. Now, this is a general issue that I have in all of my relationships. My, when my wife. All right. So let's pause for just a minute. What he's talking about and what I think has some validity is, you know, 
focusing on the past, focusing on all the oppression, focusing on all the things that were wrong in bygone days. Um, and it's like, well, because of that, this is why I'm struggling. Because of what has happened, because of the, the things that happened to my ancestors, this is the reason why I am feeling the oppression now. Perhaps, yes. However, there is a responsibility and an obligation to you as an individual, right? I'm not, I'm not focusing on the, the, the specific terms that are being talked about in this video. I'm talking about, you know, white America and, and African American blacks and stuff like this in, in America. I'm talking a little bit broader, right? I'm, I'm, I'm focusing a little bit more on a, on a broader spectrum. Go back to Orlog. The things that you inherited from the past, right? The cards that you were dealt. You didn't have necessarily have a say in that. You didn't have a 100%, uh, well, you didn't have any say in, in the cards that were dealt to you. You got them because of what happened to your ancestors. But what are you doing now? And I think what we hear or what we're going to hear forward is going to um, at least build on that. So, um, Let's, uh, let's continue. Comes to me and she says, there's a problem in my life. Before we even have the conversation, I say to her, is this a listening conversation or is this a you want me to fix it conversation? <laughs> I, want to, I, want, <laughs> I want to pause for just a minute about that. Is this a listening conversation or is this a you want me to fix it conversation? Guilty as charged, right? Um, myself as a husband with my wife, you know, um, uh, or, or anybody in a, in, a, in a monogamous relationship, you know, that 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 deals with another person's struggles or another person's opinions or another person's thoughts on things. You know, we, we hear things quite often, and I myself um, am the type of person that wants to fix things. It's not always my responsibility to fix something. So I like this whole thing. I like this whole approach of when myself as an individual hear something from whether it be my wife or, or whatever like okay is this a you want me to fix this scenario or do you just want me to shut up and listen scenario i think that's a very valuable and important um dynamic um that is part of conversation you know what i mean because i'm sure i'm not the only one that that feels like oh when i hear about a problem i gotta fix it you know it's like we feel like we're the vanilla ice of 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 individuals yo there's a problem let's solve it yada 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 maybe not you know maybe not maybe you're not in that position maybe that's not what this is about um so i like the definition i like that there's that those those barriers outlined so let's continue and I think that when it comes to politics, there should be far fewer listening conversations. Like, I want you to tell me about all the crap that's happening because I don't care. I mean, I care, but it doesn't. But now the question is, what are you going to do? Right. That's a much more important conversation because we only have five minutes together. Is that five minutes going to be spent on all the terrible things that happened, which I fully agree with that I, I would have fought if I were there, but I wasn't right. Are we going to spend five minutes talking about all the terrible things that happened to blacks and Jews and gays and women and, and Hispanics in, in the United States? Or are we going to talk about right now what you can do to succeed? Because I don't think that the rules are holding you back. And I think that is a huge huge thing to think about. Yes, there were some horrible things that happened. Yes, there were some terrible things that if given the opportunity to be in those positions or to be in that time frame of things, could we advocate it? Could we be there to fight for those that couldn't fight for themselves, et cetera, et cetera, whatever, um, whatever your motives, whatever your opinions are, right? It's not that we don't care because we care to the extent of yes, that was horrible. I'm, gonna, I'm just when I when I say we, I mean we. Okay, um, Marilyn Manson. When I say we, what I mean is me. When I say clean, I mean dirty. La da 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 da. Does that even make any sense? Probably not. But let's look at the fact that yes, there were some really horrible things that throughout history have just outlined and, and, and laid down a aesthetic, laid down a understanding of the way things could be and maybe will always be. 
Were they horrible? Yes. Can we fix it? No, because it's in Urd. Okay. This is the way I this is the way I think when I hear conversation like this, when I hear dialogue like this between Ben Shapiro and this this other young uh, Eastern Indian individual. You know, things that happened in the past. They were horrible. Yes. Could we fix it? No. What are we doing now? Right? What are we doing now to change the progression of things going forward? I think there's going to be a little bit more about that in this dialogue as we go forward. So let's continue. So I've never, ever at any point suggested that there's not been historic discrimination against black people or even that current day poverty is at least in part an outgrowth of that historic discrimination. What I have suggested is that if you are using that historic discrimination as a reason why you are not, as an individual human being, becoming more income mobile and not making good decisions, no one is making the call for you right now as an individual to get that girl pregnant. And that's, that's the argument that I'm making. All right. So um, the young man who initiated this conversation is going to ask some more things, and we're going to get, get into that here in just a minute. Um, but again, it's you know cause and effect. The things that happened before are not triggering or initiating things that you do now. You know you can't place blame on the past for your actions now. There there is a the responsibility. There's a level of obligation. There's a level of responsibility that we have here and now in the Vrdandi, okay, in here and now, which is the realm of Vrdandi. We talk about the norms. We talk about Urd, Vrdandi in school, you know, what was, what is, what should or could be. We are in the Vrdandi. So the things that happen are in the realm of Urd, Orlog, all that kind of stuff. The things that we just don't have any real control over, right? What are we doing now? So let's listen now to what this young man responds to or asks um, in, in reply to, to, to Ben's dialogue, okay? Sure, yeah. Um, so I guess, like, would you, like, so don't, would you, would you have to admit, though, that between different races and different cultures, there are, there are different levels of success, and there's definitely, you would expect that somebody who grows up with with uh, with a less with being able less to succeed, you you would you would expect that that would happen in certain in certain communities and certain right. That's why they're called pathologies of culture. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if if you grew up in a worse situation than somebody else who grew up in a better situation, of course you're going to grow up having obstacles that that other person has to overcome. But that doesn't mean that that other person number one victimized you, right? There's no one in America today, for example, who's enslaved a black person that I know of, or if they have, they'd be in jail. Um, I'm sure that nobody in this room, right, none of the young white people in this room were alive during the times of Jim Crow. So the question is, do we take away from the white people in this room to rectify historic injustices, or do we recognize that history is filled with historic injustices, and now we're going to have to find a way to overcome those obstacles together without redistributing income, for example. Now, I have called for movements, for example, for, uh, for companies to go into inner cities and make a deal with students in inner cities and say to them, listen, you get good grades and we'll pay for your college, and then you come afterward and you work for us for three years to pay off that debt. And I think there are things that we can do in the private sector. This is why I think religious communities are so important. I'm not against charity. I'm not against us as individuals going out and helping people. What I am against is the idea that the government can fix this problem because the government cannot fix historic inequity. Okay, so let's pause that for a minute. Government cannot fix historic inequity. There's been a, a pretty large um, view, at least now in, in today, okay, February 2021, wherein some states in the United States, okay, and I wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak strictly on the grounds of the domestic United States because that's where I live and that's where I reside and that's the, you know, all the news and all the, the type of stuff that I see. There's, there's a lot of talk here lately uh, when it comes to like the weather, um, that sort of thing. I recently had a conversation with some folks that I know, um, not necessarily personally to like face-to-face -face interactions, but know personally to the extent of um, being part of a, a, a social media uh, group where we talk regularly. And I know when I understand what these people are about. And the, the discussion came up about a, a state um, an official of a state who has since resigned, I'm talking about the state of Texas, um, who pretty much brought up this whole entire thing where it's like, you know what? It's not the government's responsibility to make sure that you're okay. Like these are all commodities. These are all 
um, privileges, they're not rights. And your role as an individual is to take care of your own. It's not the government's job to make sure that you're taken care of as an individual and you as an individual are obligated to the people who you're closest to, your inner circle. I talked about enough on this platform about inner circles, inengard, your inner yard, right? The sacredness of the yard, taking care of those. How, whatever, how, you know, the, the broadness, the, 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 the spectrum wherein your yard extends may vary. But it ain't the government's job to make sure that your yard is taken care of, right? Um, that's up to you and yours. So you are tied through frith to take care of your inner, your circle, your yard, however far that, that th those boundaries extend. And that is where your obligation lies. That is where the obligation of the yard lines. The government is outside of that. These are all commodities. These are all things that it just don't fall within the inner, within the yard, right? Let's continue. All that the government can do is set the rules at, at an equal level, equal law, uh, equal you know, equal judgment under law, equal justice under law is the only way that we're ever going to approach anything that looks like a fair society. There's no such thing as a fair society where the government plays God and gives some to others and takes from others. So would you, would you say that you basically, we should, like other people who are not, you know, in, in an oppressed state, they should, they should wait and wait for other people to pull themselves up. Uh, do you think that's how we should solve it? Or do you think there is a more I think every culture in American history, every individual in American history who has succeeded has had a combination of people who help them out, not in the government, people who help them out and their own capacity to, to bootstrap it. All right, not the government, right? This is the, this is the key point about this whole conversation, this whole dialogue. There have been people in place, there have been those in place that have been able to help. And it ain't the government, man. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't this like overall authority. There, there is a place for that and there is a position for that. Um, but when it comes to taking care of our own and when it comes to taking care of people as a society, you know, we're going to talk about this when the video ends or when, or when this dialogue here ends, this, this whole thing. I want to talk a little bit about where the, I feel like this fits as a heathen and in, and in modern times, a heathen worldview of things. Because I think that there's some really valid points brought up here. You know, it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't the government's job to make sure that you're okay. It's your job to make sure that you and yours are okay. And when things aren't okay with you and yours, what are you going to do to make sure that things are okay? How do you adapt and overcome? How do you find ways, how, how, how intuitive, how innovative, how, you know, ingenious do you become? Um, there's not a whole lot left to this video, so let's listen and continue. I mean, when my great-grandparents got here, they were dirt poor and didn't speak English. Uh, Great-great-grandparents got here. They were dirt poor and didn't speak English. This is true for virtually everybody in the room, right? At some point, somebody came over here, and they were dirt poor and didn't speak English. Uh, and that doesn't mean that on a generational level, people are going to go from, from zero to 100. Um, but it does mean that we're going to need to move in the right direction as opposed to sitting around and talking about historic injustice all day because that doesn't get anything done. And that my friends, is where I feel there is value. Talking about the fact that the past is what it is, you know? Um, talking about the fact that the past is, is the way it is. So be it, you know? Um, what do we do now? Just because our, our descendants Sorry, just because our ancestors received oppression, just because our ancestors experienced oppression, just because our ancestors had a hard time of it, and their luck transferred over to us as their descendants, right? What are we doing now to ensure that our 
the sentence, we as ancestors who we will become ancestors one day, what are we doing to ensure that we're doing the right thing for them? You know, because you can't blame your current situation on the past. You can, I mean, anybody can do what they want to do. Like you can blame the fact that, oh, you know, my, my ancestors were, were this or they were that, you know? And again, myself, Midgard Musings as a brand, as a, as a name, as a, as a label or whatever, I don't come on here on these platforms and I don't go, you know, well, it's, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't harp on this whole political scheme, but I think that what this video portrays and what this video that I just shared talks about is beyond political views. You know what I mean? I think that there's a lot of value in understanding the fact that Orlog is inherited and it is changeable. You have the ability to enter into the web and change things. You are not destined to be what your ancestors were, right? Some things just happened along the way and you kind of absorb that luck. Luck is not bad or good at least not in a heathen worldview. Luck just is. You absorbed certain things. You didn't have any say in that, but you do have a say in what happens now, right? You have a say in what happens now, and what happens now is up to you. So are you going to just sit back and be like, you know what, the government doesn't do anything for me, therefore I'm a victim. I, I, I need more from the government because that's what, they're supposed to do. Well, what are you supposed to do? What are you positioned to do? How are you taking care of you and yours and those that are within your inner? Everybody has an inner yard. Everybody has an inner yard. I don't care where you are, what the extent of your, you know, uh, community, how far the reaches of your community goes. Some places may have a broader reach. Some people and some folks may have a longer uh, established community that includes the inner, but there, there is that inner. So whether it's two people, whether it's three people, whether it's 15 people, whether it's 25, the numbers don't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't really make a difference. If you're listening and you're watching, you have an in guard, you have an inner yard. Your responsibility, your obligation to that yard is up to you and yours, right? What are you doing to make sure that your yard is well tended? And the outer yard be damned. Utengard is Utengard. It is outside of that. So, you know, there's a lot of people that may be listening or watching that think, well, that's so harsh. You know, to think that the government doesn't care about us, the government doesn't express their interest in me as an individual, and that they don't want to, you know, make sure that I'm well taken care of. And they may get they may get offended, they may get hurt about that. Well, if you're listening and you're watching and you're a heathen, what are you doing to make sure that you are well taken care of? Because when the government crashes, when, when, when this whole globalized system, whatever it may be, wherever you are, decides to crap the bed, when I say decide, I don't mean that it's like it's a conscious decision, but when it's like when, when, when everything ultimately just poops the pot, right, where do you fall? Where do we fall as heathens? You know, everybody's so focused on this, you know, self-reliance and, 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 and you know, the nine noble virtues, this, that thing, that, and the other about, you know, um, ingenuity and, and self-reliance and, and, and all this kind of stuff. Yes, there, these are values that inherently may not be heathen, right? When, when you look at like an arch heathen view, but these were things that just had to be to survive. And are we now reaching a point in our society where it's not so 
arch heathen, where it's not so ancient, where it's not so foreign. What are you doing? How are you caring in advance to protect and to safeguard your nearest and dearest? So I hope that this video shed a little bit of light. And if it makes it out to the podcast streams, I'm not sure if it will, and I'm going to try to make sure that it does. Um, but um, please let me know what you think, wherever it may be. If it's down in the comments, if it's in the show footnotes, whatever, where, wherever this comes across into your ear holes, eye holes, ear holes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, definitely would love to know about what you think about it. Um, so please leave a comment down below and share what you think or up in the footnotes, you know, you guys know how to reach me. There's all of that information up there. So, or down there, wherever it may be, <laughs> I'm recording this with audio and video. So I'm speaking in terms of, as if it were on the YouTube platform, you guys know where to, you know, comment and all that kind of stuff. But if it reaches the, the audio platforms on the various podcast things, um, just check it out. Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com is a way that you can always reach me. If you are just listening and you want to, you know, reach out that sort of way, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, those are my main three social media platforms. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today and hearing and watching my thoughts. Um, until we speak again, hail, stay safe, and may your hearth fires continue to burn bright. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for your support.